Hi everyone, welcome back to Colouring with Kay. Thank you for clicking on the video. So, um, in this video I'm doing a sort of a little tutorial. Um, I think I had a request a um, while ago about whether I could do a colour along, <coughs> excuse me, a colour along a page from this book um, because I said that what's in my colour colouring bag in May that I was going to colour a page in this book which is this page here the B page um, which is I think a magnifying glass on the land something like that by Rita Berman and um, of course time is very limited at the moment I just don't seem to have much time at all for colouring um, for, for the things I enjoy really um, so I thought um, at least what I'll do is try to show how I colour these honeycombs and um, the bees and I thought at least that's better than nothing so I hope that's okay um, so yeah that's what we're going to do so I wanted to show you that I um, worked out how to do these honeycombs because I used the tutorial in Colorist Special Effects 3 by Helen Elliston and so it's basically this tutorial here and I've I've basically tried to use, I've based it mainly on, on that tutorial and I've sort of practiced it a little bit because um, like I say I am totally learning how to do all of this but I'm pleased with how it's coming out so far. So for the honeycombs I am using Prismacolor Premier um, pencils that have been all suggested from Helen's book and then I've decided to use um, my own colours and things for the poly actually they were polychromos that I'm using for this um, and um, yes yeah, some paints but I'll show you all of that I haven't quite finished this B at the bottom off here with the uh, glitter paint but let's get started so um, I know I've forgotten some things downstairs because I film upstairs so I'm gonna have to go down and get um, something else for the bees that I've forgotten I sort of make about five trips up and down because I keep forgetting things. So the colours we're going to use for the honeycombs, and I'm going to just show you how, how I did them. I mean, they've come out quite well, I think. The tutorial is quite good. I mean, always I'm always thinking, am I following the instructions correctly? But I think they look okay. And then what I did is, rather than just have all of the honeycombs in pencil, I wanted some in metallic paint because you know what I'm like, I've got to have shiny stuff. So um, I've used, I want some of the honeycombs in some three or four different coloured metallic paints. So we'll have a look at that. So the colours I've got or that you will need if you're going to colour along and try this with me, that would be awesome, is a, P a PC 1011, so 10011. That's deco yellow. Then we have, um, I hope I've hope brought my sharpener. I better haven't. I'm going to have to go and get that as well. Um, canary Yellow, which is PC916. Then we have um, Golden Rod, which is PC1034 or 1034. Then we have um, Pumpkin Orange, which is PC1032. And then we have um, Sienna Brown, which is PC945. I will list these below as well. Um, Sepia PC948 and then black which is PC935 and then I chose just a red and an orange uh, just to make it just to give a warmer effect which is suggested in the tutorial book. So I've got Poppy Red 922 leave that there and um, orange PC918 I think this is sort of sharp enough. I might have to um, go and grab my sharpener. Actually, I'm going to go because I need um, my black pen as well. So I'll be back in a sec. Okay, so we're ready to start, I think. So let's do some of the honeycombs here in this top right-hand corner. So I'm going to bring you in close like that. Maybe even closer. I'm just make sure I'm on camera so we'll start on say these here I'll do a few so I hope you're all doing really well um, and um, enjoying your life and things are going well at work and at home 
So the colour I'm starting with is the Canary Yellow uh, 916. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over... Shall I bring you still in further? Right, let's go there. Um, I'm going to leave a white space about here. I'm just going to go around there like this. And you can use about, say, light to medium pressure and then just leave that white bit there just on one edge. Now where you leave, I'm going to do that again here, where you leave the white bit you can just vary because you don't, you know, you want them to look um, varied. They're not going to look exactly the same. So the white bit on this second one I'm going to leave near the top. White space. So like a, cir like a bit of a rough circular white space. And I'm just using light to medium pressure so now I'm going to leave the white space on this right hand side on this side so just fairing it so I'm just going to do um, maybe let's see let's get in there that's it position this correctly so you can see exactly what I'm doing um, and then we'll leave a white bit here at the bottom so yeah um, it's been fun actually um, trying out these tutorials and for once I thought instead of starting to do it on camera um, right at the start I'll, I'll do a bit of practicing myself um, and then so I get a bit more confident with it as well um, before I show how I do it on camera so there we go so that is what I've got so far with my um, Canary Yellow PC916. So now I'm going to use the Decor Yellow um, 101111 and where I've got the white space I'm just going to blend out towards the white space from the Canary Yellow into the white space a little bit but of course don't get rid of the white space completely because you still need that there. So just Blend it towards the white like that. So that's what we've got. All right, next color is the um, Goldenrod 1034. So now with this, I'm just going to add that in to sort of um, some areas. I'm not going to go over the whole area and I'm not working my, myself in from the outside inwards. I'm just making my own little random shape, if you can see, and just however you want to do it. Can you see I'm not covering? I'm just going around for this bit anyway. I'm just doing it on this edge, so I'm putting my golden rod in there. Again, medium pressure. So I've just like made it my own little shape here and on the edges I might just this the um, honeycomb edges there on two sides so I think that's okay try to keep in the lines well I am <laughs> I am it's not working too well um, and then this one I'm going to start this edge here and work myself around this so you just pour it over some of the original colour that we added, you know, the canary yellow, but just randomly. Let's put a bit more there, that's fine. So again, medium pressure. This one, um, so I'm working myself up from the bottom of the um, honeycomb structure to the top and then maybe a little bit just on this edge here and I'll leave the rest or maybe a little bit there like that and then same here I think I'll add it just around here 
so how much you add is up to you but you don't want to cover all the areas where you added the um, first colour which was the canary yellow see this one's more on the edges so you vary it because you want they're not all going to have the identical exact identical um, sort of way it's coloured it's going to look different There we go. That's it. Um, I'm least pleased with that one so far, but we'll see how we go. So that was a golden rod, and then next is the um, pumpkin, pumpkin orange, which is one zero three two, and uh, with this, I'm going to, you know, where we've added the golden rod, I'm just gonna put this in the centre areas of that so just the central bits but not going over the entire area where I put the golden rod apart from on the edges you know the edges here on the honeycomb same here I'm just going to go over the goldenrod areas but not covering the whole of the goldenrod areas just um, in the centre of it. So like that. It doesn't have to be particularly precise so you know I think I think you're unlikely to go wrong because it'll look really nice anyway because the colours that we're using and the layering and stuff will make it look really nice and it's going to look quite random anyway so it'll be good so yeah just over um, the golden red rod areas but not covering the entire parts There. okay so that was our pumpkin orange okay so the next color now is sienna sienna brown 945 now this i'm only going to add a um you know where i added the last color i'm just going to add a small amount of that in in places just in places not over the entire area but just in certain places over where I added the pumpkin orange and particularly when I go around these you know these beehive corners some of them or well, the ones here and here and here and here maybe a bit there Again, medium pressure. So you can see I'm not adding it everywhere. And the amount that you add can vary as well. But yeah, I'm just going over some of the pumpkin orange areas and rounding this up basically making this a rounded curve there and there okay so that's that a bit more there and if you feel that um, there's not enough of the previous color which i'm sort of thinking i could do the little bit of this pumpkin orange here and I'll just add it in so you can always go in afterwards and sort of do that that's it okay next colour is uh, sepia 948 there we go I don't know it doesn't it doesn't uh, always um, focus right so now the sepia uh, can you see here Oh, actually, I don't want to move my book, but I'm only going to add just a few dark points.
points because that is a dark colour so just a few little dark spots here and there medium pressure like that so just chosen a few I think we'll put some up here hope you can see and then maybe there so again previous parts going over some of the previous pencil parts but not over the whole of the area so that's that that's the sepia and then uh, finally we're going to add a little bit of black just over some of the sepia 935 um, so let's get going into the center area of you know where I added the sepia just a little bit just to darken it up that but yeah I love colouring honeycombs it's just one of my um, favourite things to colour actually um, so yeah okay now next we're going to get our right wait a second have I missed out I've missed out one colour here which I should have which is white we do need a white so in, I've got the prisma white here which is nine three eight Okay, so what I'm going to do is use the Prisma White to just merge some of these colours in like this. Um, I'm going to go keep the centre as white as you can, so you don't want to really muddy that up. So keep that white, and then go around over the other colours like this like that and then almost done you'll be pleased to hear is um, I want to warm give a warmer look so I'm going to add some of this um, orange 918 I'm just going to put that in certain places again light pressure this is uh, just sort of adding it where, where um, I want to just to give it a little bit of a warm feel and also you could vary it with that instead of the orange adding a bit of red so I've got the poppy red here that I want to just add in give a bit of a warmer warmer look like that okay I think it's relatively okay I mean I'm going to get a little bit of this yeah, I think it's all right that. Okay, so that's what we've got so far. I hope that that looks relatively okay. Um, like that. And then, finishing touches are that um, we're going to add, I hope I've remembered to bring this. Yes, I have. Good. Is I'm going to use one of the white gel pens. I've got the Arteza 0.8. And I'm just going to add in little white dots and maybe stars and in places randomly. Again, 
it just make, gives it a little bit it just I don't know it just adds to it doesn't it and makes it look um, nice I guess um, so yeah and that's what that was suggested in the tutorial book as well so that's that's what I've done and that's it really that's how I did the honeycomb um, so now just go out a bit so those are the honeycombs and uh, I hope that was um, at least a little bit useful and then now I'm going to do a bee so I'm going to do one of these bees so I might do this one here this little fella or shall I do this one at the top I might do this one at the top so we'll do that fella first um, and then I am using now so I'll just put my prisma colours away and I have some polychromos to use here so I didn't use a tutorial book for this I just did it myself so I just chose the colours and thought these will go well together and of course most people have prismas and or polys so I thought you know it would be a good thing to do so the colours we've got for the polys are light yellow glaze 104 we have um, light chrome yellow um, 106 then we have um, dark cadmium yellow 108 um, like I say I shall put all of these uh, colours in the description as well I've got Bistri or Bista I don't know how you say it uh, 179 and then um, a little bit of this red colour which is the red violet uh, 194 um, I'll also show you what I use for the legs but I'll show you that in a minute so let's start with our little fella here so we're going to start with a light yellow glaze and all I did is just lightly cover we're close enough aren't we hopefully we are that's it don't think I can get you closer than that so yeah just lightly colour leave a little bit of a white there in the centre here between the eyes and then same here I'm going to leave a little white bit in the centre I'm just lightly covering Mr B I really do like bees especially in colouring books really like colouring them and they're lovely as well right there you go um, so that's it and then it's just so amazing how different polys are to use compared to prismas but they're both beautiful to use but I really like the difference in you know I, I like the difference in using them so light chrome yellow is the next one and then all I do is I pop this colour down just over the yellow glaze on the edges there Actually, I'm just going to cover it. I'm just layering it up, basically. Uh, sharpener. Maybe should have sharpened these beforehand. But... Right, I sort of plan things out and prepare things, but um, I always forget. There's always things that I forget. Getting old now. Right, so um, just over this bit as well. And again, I'm not going all the way to the top here. Um, I'm leaving that quite pale um, and that's just got the yellow glaze the original colour um, so I'm not going all the way to the top with this light chrome yellow in fact maybe I should do that oh no well the way that this this bee is positioned I think the light hits it there so I just want to keep it pale there so yeah, I think we'll just leave it like that. Next colour is this beautiful colour here, which is a darker yellow. So that is dark cadmium yellow. And I'm going to go over the previous colour. But not layer it all the way fully. So just at the edges, working my way in and fading, fading out. And then from the bottom, again, I'm only adding, I'm not fully going over the original, the, you know, second colour that I put down. So 
so there we go and then next colour is the uh, Bistre or however you say it B-I-S-T-R-E um, just to sharpen that these these are brilliant sharpeners by the way the M&R um, I think I first got it because um, it was mentioned by Anne from A Colourful Life that was a while ago and um, she said some great things about it and I got them I got M&R sharpener and I just really really like them they're so good so again I'm only putting this colour just round the edges because this is my second darkest colour so I don't want to put too much in I'm using light pressure here now light to medium so I don't want to put too much in better to build it up with light pressures particularly with polys and then my final colour is the red violet so let's just see if we can sharpen that to it uh, I really like how polys sharpen they just sharpen so lovely so this again this is going to be right at the ends I'm not I'm just going to put like a tiny amount of that just on the edges adds that sort of a really nice deep magenta sort of reddish colour reddy violet that's what, it, what it's called so and then just at the edge here Right, so now we've got all our layers on, we're going to go over it one more time. So I've just used the red violet. I'm going to go back to my bistry and just go over in the reverse order now. So the bistry, or bister, I just don't know how to say that colour. It's a lovely colour though. And then it was the dark cadmium yellow because layering is just key with polys if you love layering which certain times I do I'm in the mood to just layer and layer and layer but other times I want to colour just by mainly burnishing colours together and then, then I go for my prismas so it depends on the mood um, light chrome yellow is the next one so I'm just going to go over that bit you get such intense colours um, through layering as well beautiful and then my last colour which was the or the first colour was light yellow glaze so just up there not much white space there but I'm going to use my Prisma white now which is so tiny I've got a spare of it and just put that you know where I imagine my white space to be just at the top here as well because the prisma white is quite opaque so it's nice right so there we go so that's basically the bees body done and now we're going to use we're going to do the legs so I've just got three colors for the legs the three colours I got in Polly's is the Burnt Sienna, which is 2, is it 283? 283, yeah, I think it's 283. And then the Walnut Brown 177, and then I have the Black now. Actually, I've just remembered, for this bit, the body just needs to be completed by, you know where it's got little hairs? You know where they've indicated the hairs I just like to go over it with the black just to make it look a bit hairier maybe that's what I did with the rest anyway so there we go right so let's do the legs the legs are easy burnt sienna just lightly 
go over them like that. I think that is one of its legs there as well. So always missing parts of pictures out when I'm colouring. Right, I think that's it. And then we're going to use the walnut brown now. And I'm just going to put this in at one edge of the legs, the lower legs basically. So the bottom edge of the legs. I'm going to use the black to just go right on the bottom edge just to just a line I'm I'm basically just giving it the dark edge at the bottom like that That's it and then I might use my prisma white again just to go over at the top edge to just lighten it a little bit there we go right okay so that's that right now what am I doing okay so that's the body and the legs all done I think uh, actually no I have remembered I have remembered that well, I'm, I'll do that at the end. Basically, I've got a black jelly roll glaze, which I'm going to put over the eye parts and, you know, the uh, black stripe parts here. Um, but we'll do that at the end. Let's work on the wings. So, with the wings, I have my whole binds here. So, you can also uh, use pastel shades of any pencils that you've got. Um, there's the pastel low pencils which are the new ones that you can that people have been showing on their YouTube videos and I recently purchased as well um, but these these pick out a rainbow of colors and um, the prismas have got some of these colors as well too so you could use them from there so what I'm going to do this is how I'm going to do the wings I'll start off one edge and I'm going to put my color at the edge and then fade inwards like that so just fade inwards not all the way into the wings but darkest on the edges so that's that and then I got a lighter green next fade inwards so darkest on the edge of the wings and fade inwards but not all the way in just a little bit I've got a yellowish colour here that and then more more of a yellowy this might even oh yeah it's called Naples yellow so these are the whole binds that I'm using but you can get these pastel colors some of the prismas um, have sort of pastel shades which you can use instead if you do not have the um, if you do not have the whole binds or you can use, like I say, any other colours that you've got. I think there's these refined, Marco refined pastel pencils. I think they do some. And like I said, there's the pastel low new pencils as well. So any pastels but a rainbow of shades. Go. And then darkest on the edge and fade inwards the weather cannot make itself up today yeah, make its mind up today sorry it's just sun then it's rain then it's sun then it's hailstone so I don't think it's um, British weather British weather 
can't make its mind up. And then same here, I'm coming into there. I've got a purple here, a lilac should I say, not purple. I think I went in too much with this pink, so I'm just going to rub out a little bit, I think. I went too far. I love my I love my whole binds. They are um, probably my most favourite pencil. They're just beautiful to use. I just love them. So there we go. Right, so that's the rainbow effect colours um, like I say just have a rainbow colour of um, sorry rainbow assortment which you can get in certain sets now what we're going to do is um, get the Prisma white again and we're just going to merge and blend these colours inwards together so just go over it and go over the wings now notice that the white lines are getting a bit um, sort of whited out or you know uh, blurred um, but that's fine because we're going to actually go over those with um, a silver gel pen so don't want to put too much on because the wax will resist the paint which is a bit of a problem but we'll have to get over that so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my silver uniball um, silver uniball signo um, gel pen and I'm going to go over the wings basically just the black lines so I'm just going to go over that all the black lines with the wings Like so. So yeah, I am going to do a stencil video, by the way, guys. I am going to do um, a stencil video because I think I asked on one of my um, videos if you would like to see how I am currently using stencils. I mean, it's nothing groundbreaking or anything, so but I just thought it's just nice to sometimes watch videos you know where someone just shows you how they use it and then um, you know it could trigger a idea with yourself and you know that you think that you could use it as well in a different way in a book in another book or whatever so um, I will make that video hopefully I will get that out sometime in June early June maybe middle of June because I'm just trying to plan it at the moment because um, I want to show you a couple of examples of where I've used them and then you know maybe show you on camera using it as well it's just another thing that we could use you know in our books makes uh, colouring even more interesting when you've got more the more tools you have I find the the more fun it is you know it just gives you a variety more things to play with gosh I'm concentrating here right there we go so that's a silver um, uni ball right so that's done um, next we are going to add our glaze, uh, Jelly Roll Black Glaze. So what I'm going to do is just test that out on the side. Right, so it's running and working. And I'm going to just put it over the dark bits, you know, so they're shiny of the eyes. On our little Mr B. There we go. And also on these bits here, the black bits to his body. Like that. Um, that's it. 
Okay, so the only thing, I'm also going to put white, but I'm not going to put the white right now, the gel pen on the white parts because I don't want to smudge it. So the only thing that remains now is, um, well, not the only thing that remains to be honest, is two things actually remain. One, I want to put um, the glitter. Let me just show you one of these. Can you see the glitter here on the um, wings? hope you can see it. Yeah, I want to show the glitter paint that I use to put over this. It's lovely watercolour paint, and I'll I'll tell you where I got that from. And then the other thing is I'm gonna you know the some of the um, bee sorry the bee honeycomb parts I've used some paints there. Um, the metallic paints that I've used are going to be I'm going to use. This is from Renaissance, just bring you out a bit, Renaissance Colours on Etsy, handmade watercolours. It's the Fortune um, Fortune paint that I'm going to use, which is absolutely gorgeous. I'm also using Fine Tech Colero paints, so I'm going to use, I'm not sure if I did use the bronze, but I've got the bronze available. Um, I'm going to use the Inca Gold. You can buy these individually and that's what I've done as well. I've bought them individually and built up my collection like that. And walnut. So those are the paints I'm going to use um, for some of the honeycomb. So I'm just going to get prepared with that and then I'll come back. Okay, so I've um, put some water drops on my paints and let them settle for a bit. So this is, these are some glitter paints, um, these three at the bottom, from the um, Art Spirits on Etsy. And um, she also has um, a colouring channel on YouTube called Rebecca's Colouring Videos. And she also has like a water colouring channel as well called The Art Spirits. Um, and um, yeah, she's got this, she's got a shop on Etsy where you can purchase her beautiful paints. So this one I'm using, I think it's called Fairy Dust. I'm not 100% sure on that. But um, I let it settle for a bit. So hopefully you can see all the beautiful glittery it's like greeny glittery pieces so I'm gonna just pick it up the best I can and place it onto the bees now this I could use um, decor art acrylic glitters or other glitters as well now the why, why am I using this one I'm using this one because I get a subtle look and that's what I'm actually going for. I'm going for a more subtle look rather than, you know, um, something that's really too glittery. This is watercolour and it it just, I don't know, it goes with, um, I think it makes the wings because they're transparent like and, you know, they sort of have um, sort of different shades of colours in them as well. I thought that her these glitter paints, these watercolour ones will look you know really good for this purpose so that's why I went for watercolour glitter paints um, I've not really found many places which sell like watercolour uh, glittery paints but um, I know that um, the Art Spirits she, she does sell them and I just recently purchased two actually two other glittery paints which I will show you in my haul I decided to get the full pans of both of those because her glitter paints are beautiful and I just, well, I fell for them and I, I thought I just have to have them and they make me happy. It makes me happy using them so then I thought, yeah, I'm going to go for them and I did. So, yep. Yeah. So there you go. That's the, uh, I hope you can, I hope you can see that but yeah, they work beautifully. You just have to make sure that you let the water sit on the paint for a little bit of time. A couple of minutes should do it and then um, it sort of works really well then. So um, I'll let that dry and what I'm going to do instead now is I'm just going to show you um, with me using some of my Clearo paints. So here's Inca Gold. Um, so there I'll let the paint sit, the water sorry, sit on there for a while and it goes thicker and that's how you get the, the thicker sort of uh, paint nice and 
thick, well not too thick, you know, just the right consistency so that it doesn't look washed out and, you know, watery. And yeah, so, so I decided not to do all of them in pencil because um, I like to add, as you know if you watch my channel, I like to use glitter, metallic paints, gel pens and glaze and different media so it gives you a nice variety of looks because um, that's what I like so there we go that's that one and I might add one more colour let's have a look shall we add the yeah I know which one I'll add um, the one from Renaissance Colours again you can get these from Etsy that's the Fortune one one of my favourite um, one of my favourite paints of hers actually is, is that one. So I'm just going to add that, right, which honeycomb should we add that to? Let's add it to this bottom bit all the way down here. So I'm going to add that here. I actually need to add glitter to the wings of this bee at the bottom because I forgot to do that um, last time. So just look how gorgeous that looks. So beautiful. It's sort of metallic and um, glittery at the same time. But yeah, it's nice to support the smaller businesses and they make such good quality product products as well that we can enjoy. So I'm always happy to um, buy, buy from uh, you know artisan paints and things like that. But I do love my Caleros as well. So yep, there we go. Um, I'm just going to add a little bit more while we're on camera of the see the glitter paint as well. Hope it's not dried up for me. No, it's not. It's fine. So I'm just going to add that on here on this little bee bee's wings. It's sunny now. It was hail stoning sorry, about 10 minutes ago, 15 minutes ago, and now it's beautiful and bright. And it does this like several times during the day, and you just think, you just don't know what you're doing because, like, <laughs> you're thinking, is it going to stay like this? And more often than not, it probably wouldn't. But I'm happy the sun's out. Right, so now just put a little bit more on. I shall definitely be buying some more of these glittery paints when they run out. So I hope I I shall I shall uh, aim to remember to put the links in for these paints so you know where you can buy them from if you're interested. Um, if you want to treat yourself, and there we go. So I just show you the wings I hope you can I hope the camera is doing justice to these glitter paints and yeah that's it basically that's how I uh, coloured the honeycomb structures and the bees so I'm going to finish this picture off and hopefully um, I shall be able to show you it at the end of uh, May completed pages so thanks again so much for watching and thank you to everyone who leaves comments likes and watches my video I really appreciate it um, and take care um, and I'll see you next time bye